respiration in plants. So, the plants perform some of the important metabolic functions. One of the important significant function is respiration, where this is a process in which the energy is released. So, here let us discuss some of the important questions related to respiration in plants. So, question number 1. The complete breakdown of sugar in aerobic respiration results in the formation of the given options are A water and carbon dioxide, B alcohol and carbon dioxide, C fructose and water, D glucose and carbon dioxide. So, here in aerobic respiration, so this is the respiration which takes place in mitochondrion in which the complete breakdown or the complete oxidation of food materials will be taking place. So, here in aerobic respiration the glycolysis will take place. This is the first step where the glucose molecule uh, one glucose molecule is converted into two molecules of pyruvic acid. We can say the partial oxidation of the food materials and thereafter ox second step we can say oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid. The pyruvic acid which have been formed in the glycolysis step will undergo oxidative decarboxylation and during this step the pyruvic acid will be converted into acetyl coenzyme A. Then this acetyl coenzyme A will enters into the third step called as Krebs cycle and where this acetyl coenzyme A will react with different types of uh, substrate molecules and releases two compounds in the meantime those are carbon dioxide and the water molecules. So, here the complete oxidation uh, the complete oxidation of food materials will result in carbon dioxide and water and one more thing oxidative phosphorylation is other step. Here in this step also the water molecule will be formed. So, here we can say the end product of a glycolysis will be water and carbon dioxide where the complete oxidation of sugar will result in these two end products. So, based on this we can say that the correct option for question number 1 is option A. Question number 2 when one molecule of glucose is completely oxidized in aerobic respiration how many molecules of carbon dioxide are released in tricarboxylic acid cycle? The given options are A 1, B 6, C 3 and D 4. So, here the substrate molecule that have been considered in this question is glucose where it will completely oxidized to release the carbon dioxide and water. So, this products or these products are formed during the Krebs cycle process. Otherwise, we can call the Krebs cycle as tricarboxylic acid cycle also. Why we are calling this as tricarboxylic acid cycle means because the first compound that is formed in Krebs cycle is a 6 carbon compound that is called as citric acid and that contains 3 carboxylic groups that is why tricarboxylic acid cycle. So, here how many molecules of carbon dioxide are released in during the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Actually, in the tricarboxylic acid cycle we can say that uh, they, uh, they are there is a step called as decarboxylation that is loss of carbon is taking place from the substrate molecule. And one more thing that when glucose molecule will participate in glycolysis it will it will form two pyruvic acid molecules. 
and these two pyruvic acid molecules as we have discussed they are converted into acetyl coenzyme A that means each of the pyruvic acid is converted into one acetyl coenzyme A. So, as a result two acetyl coenzyme A molecules are formed and those two acetyl coenzyme A molecules here two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A will participate in the tricarboxylic acid cycle and uh, they will release carbon dioxide and water. Here when one acetyl coenzyme A or one pyruvic acid is uh, taking part in the Krebs cycle, we can say that uh, once the Krebs cycle is taking place, but here for one glucose molecule, it will be resulting in two pyruvic acid molecules. That is the reason why for complete oxidation of one glucose molecule, the Krebs cycle will take place for two times, twice. So, and here in each Krebs cycle, at two steps the decarboxylation will be taking place. So, whenever one decarboxylation is taking place, one carbon dioxide molecule is released. So, at two steps the decarboxylation is taking place, at each step one carbon dioxide is released. So, as a result two carbon dioxide molecules are formed. But as I said that for one glucose molecule, two acetyl coenzyme A molecules are there. That is the reason why the Krebs cycle takes place twice. When it is taking place once, it is releasing two carbon dioxide molecules. So, two times the Krebs cycle will be taking place. That is the reason why it will be resulting into two into two. Total four carbon dioxide molecules are released. So, based on this one, the correct answer for question number two is option D. Question number three. Calculate the number of ATP produced for one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule by the end of aerobic respiration through electron transport only. The given options are A 20, B 16, C 15 and D 18. So, here glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule is one of the intermediate compound that have been formed in glycolysis process. In the glycolysis process, so here the glucose molecule will undergo phosphorylation and converted into glucose 6 phosphate and glucose 6 phosphate will be isomerized into fructose 6 phosphate molecule and uh, this fructose 6-phosphate once again will get phosphorylated to form into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and the so formed fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will undergo cleavage or split to form into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate one molecule and uh, the second molecule will be dihydroxy acetone phosphate. So, two trioses are formed and uh, this dihydroxy acetone phosphate will once again will be converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So, one molecule of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is formed from fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate and one molecule is formed from dihydroxy acetone phosphate. So, it results in two molecules in total. So, from here onwards the steps are taking place twice, but here in the question they are asking that uh, how many number of ATP molecules are produced for one molecule of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So, let us take here glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate uh, will be converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid and each molecule is converted into 1, but let us take only one molecule, we should not consider that one because in the question they are asked only one. It will be once again convert undergo dephosphorylation and uh, forms into 1 ATP, releases 1 ATP molecules to form 
थ्री फॉस्फो ग्लिजरिक एसिड एंड थ्री फॉस्फो ग्लिजरिक एसिड विल अंडर गो इंट्रामोलिकुलर शिफ्ट टू फॉर्म इन टू टू फॉस्फो ग्लिजरिक एसिड एंड इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इंटू फॉस्फो इनॉल पायरेविक एसिड फाइनली दिस फॉस्फो इनॉल पायरेविक एसिड इज कन्वर्टेड इंटू पायरेविक एसिड सो दीज आर द स्टेप्स विच आर टेकिंग पार्ट इन ग्लाइकोलिस प्रोसेस एंड वन मोर थिंग दैट हियर ड्यूरिंग द कन्वर्शन ऑफ ग्लिजरॉल डी है थ्री फॉस्फेट टू वन थ्री बिस फॉस्फो ग्लिजरिक ग्लिजरिक एसिड हियर वन मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ एन ए डी इज कन्वर्टेड इंटू एन ए डी पी वाई बिकॉज हियर ग्लिजरॉल डी है थ्री फॉस्फेट विल अंडर गो रिडक्शन एंड इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इंटू एन ए डी हेच सो दिस इज दिस इज अ रीजन वाई हियर ड्यूरिंग ग्लाइकोलिस वन मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ एन ए डी हेच इज फॉर्म actually for one glycolysis two molecules have to be formed but here we are considering only one glycerol dh3 phosphate so only one molecule of nadh will be formed the so formed nadh will enter into electron transport system that is uh, oxidative phosphorylation and that will be converted into atp molecule so let us consider let us uh, first let us remember this one then this pyruvic acid which have been formed here will undergo oxidative decarboxylation and converted into acetyl coenzyme a here we are saying oxidative that means pyruvic acid will undergo dehydrogenation and here also what happens one molecule of nad will get reduced into nadh molecule so here in this step also one more molecule of nadh will be formed and the so form acetyl coenzyme a which will enters into krebs cycle and uh, in krebs cycle a total of four oxidations are taking place and uh, these oxidations will be in the form of dehydrogenations that is a loss of hydrogen from the substrate molecule and here the acceptor of uh, the hydrogens in this steps are nad molecule and out of these four oxidations at three steps nad will undergo will get reduced to form into nadh molecule and in one step fadh fadh will be form fadh2 will be formed so in total how many are form is here one in uh, one nadh in the glycolysis One NADH when pyruvic acid is undergoing oxidative to decarboxylation. Three NADH in the Krebs cycle and one FADH two in the Krebs cycle. These are the number of NADH and FADH when we are considering one molecule instead of two molecules here. Because we are considering why we are considering one molecule means in the question they had asked uh, re regarding one molecule of uh, glycerol dh three phosphate only. And here. this is from glycolysis and this is from pyruvic acid oxidative decarboxylation and these two are from the krebs cycle here when all these nadh and uh, fadh so that have been formed when they enter into the electron transport system they are converted into atp molecules depending upon the proton concentration gradient or chemi osmotic hypothesis uh, given by peter michel scientist and here whatever and one more thing this oxidative decarboxylation and krebs cycle will be taking place in the mitochondrion there's a reason why when the nadh which have been formed in the mitochondria will undergo oxidation during electron transport system they will release three atp molecules so here one nadh and four uh, three nadh from krebs cycle that means four nadh which have been formed in the mitochondrion we release three atp molecules so four into three total 12 atp molecules will be formed and uh, 
the FADH2 which have been formed during the Krebs cycle it will release 1 FADH2 and it, it uh, the energy which is equals to 2 ATP molecules. So, here 2 ATPs are formed and uh, 1 NADH which have been formed in glycolysis as we know that glycolysis will be taking taking place in the uh, cytoplasm. So, here that will uh, they, that will not come uh, through the through the all the electron carriers that is the reason why that NADH2 will release the energy which is equal to 2 ATP molecules. So, when all this NADH2 and FADH2 which are formed in the aerobic respiration will uh, pass through that electron transport system they are releasing this num this many number of ATP molecules 12 plus 2 plus 2. So, total so total the total number of ATP that have been formed here it is 16 ATPs provided that when one glycerol DH3 phosphate is taking part in the process. So, here based on this we can say that the correct answer for uh, question number 3 is option B. Question number 4. If one molecule of pyruvic acid which is formed as end product of glycolysis is subjected to anaerobic respiration then there is the given options are loss of 2 molecules of ATP, B gain of 2 molecules of ATP, C gain of 4 molecules of ATP and D loss of 4 molecules of ATP. Okay, here this is a question related to anaerobic respiration. Here in aerobic and anaerobic there is a common process called as glycolysis that is the glucose molecule will undergo partial oxidation and forms into two molecules of uh, pyruvic acid. One glucose molecule will be converted into two molecules of pyruvic acid and if it is an eukaryotic organism they have mitochondria in them such that this pyruvic acid will enter into mitochondria and participate in aerobic respiration. But if it is an uh, prokaryotic organism like bacteria what happens is uh, the mitochondrion is not available or not present. So, the, con the continuation process after glycolysis should occur in the cytoplasm only that is the reason why they will participate in the fermentation process that is what we call it as alcohol fermentation or depending upon the organism may be alcohol fermentation, lactic acid fermentation or acetic acid fermentation. Here we have to consider two pyruvic acid molecules, but in the question they had given only one pyruvic acid molecule. When py one pyruvic acid molecule will participate in the fermentation process or we can say the anaerobic process. How many either there is a gain of ATP or loss of ATP if it is so what is the number of gain ATP or the loss ATP actually here there is a loss of ATP first thing loss of ATP molecules and here the pyruvic acid which have been formed here will be converted into acetaldehyde molecule then this acetaldehyde will be converted into ethyl alcohol if we consider it as an alcohol fermentation process and one molecule of uh, pyruvic acid will be converted into one molecule of acetaldehyde and uh, which is further converted into one molecule of ethyl alcohol. In the mean mean process what happens is uh, the decarboxylation will be taking place because it is a 3 carbon molecule converted into a 2 carbon molecule called as acetaldehyde further it will undergo uh, reduction process and uh, results in the ethyl alcohol and here in this process there is a loss of ATP molecules why because uh, here in this process the NADH will be utilized NADH will be utilized and uh, when one NADH molecule is utilized so there is a loss of uh, the ATP molecules that is what the ATP 
uh, the NADH which have been formed actually in the gl glycolysis process, we know that uh, two molecules of NADH will be formed and uh, there is a net gain of two ATP molecules. So, here out of that uh, the one NADH will be utilized here, so that there will be a loss of uh, two molecules of ATP. So, from the given options, uh, option A is the correct answer. Question number 5, pick out the correct statement from the following. The given options are A, in glycolysis hydration is followed by dephosphorylation. B, in link reaction two carbon dioxide molecules are removed from each pyruvic acid. C, one turn of Krebs cycle requires three NAD plus and one FAD. D, in Krebs cycle dehydration is immediately followed by oxidation. So, here in this question they had given some statements regarding the aerobic respiration. From that uh, the three statements are incorrect statements and one, one, one statement is a correct statement. So, let us take the first one that is uh, glyco in glycolysis hydration is followed by dephosphorylation. So, here in this process a hydration will be taking part in the last step. So, that here there is no such uh, process of dephosphorylation followed by the hydration process. Though, so, this statement is wrong. And the statement B in link reaction that is uh, oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid where pyruvic acid is converted into acetyl coenzyme A. In that process two carbon dioxide molecules are removed from each pyruvic acid. So, actually here one pyruvic acid will undergo oxidative decarboxylation by losing one carbon dioxide molecule and converted into one molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. That means, one pyruvic acid will undergo oxidative decarboxylation and uh, one molecule of carbon dioxide will be removed. But in the statement it, it has been given that two carbon dioxide molecules are removed from one pyruvic acid. So, this statement is also wrong that have been given in the options. Then coming to the statement number C, one turn of Krebs cycle requires three NAD and one FAD. So, here in Krebs cycle in total of uh, four oxidations will be taking place. Out of this four, in this four of uh, oxidations at three steps, three molecules of NAD plus are required and uh, converted into three NADH molecules. And at one oxidation, one molecule of FAD plus is required to convert into one molecule of FADH2. Provided that here the Krebs cycle is taking place for once. If it is taking place for twice starting with one uh, glucose molecule in the glycolysis process, instead of 3 NAD there they required 6 NAD plus and instead of 1 FAD uh, there they required 2 FAD plus molecules. So, for one turn of Krebs cycle, so 4 oxidations 3 NAD and 1 FAD is required. So, this statement is correct one. Then statement D, in Krebs cycle dehydration is immediately followed by oxidation. So, actually as we are discussed that uh, four uh, oxidations are there, but here dehydration is not immediately followed by the oxidation process. So, this statement is also incorrect. So, from the given options, option C is the correct answer. Question number 6, the substrate of first oxidation and uh, fourth oxidation of Krebs cycle are formed respectively by the given options are A dehydration and hydration, B hydration and dehydration, C decarboxylation and cleavage, D hydration and hydration. Okay, here the substrate of uh, first oxidation and uh, the fourth oxidation. So, let us see the reactions here. In the first step the 
acetyl coenzyme A will uh, react with are uh, taken by the oxalo acetic acid and uh, converted into a 6 carbon molecule called as citric acid and uh, this molecule will undergo dehydration and converted into aconitic acid and this aconitic acid will undergo hydration and converted into isocitric acid. This isocitric acid will undergo oxidation that is what the first oxidation we can consider. So, here the substrate of first oxidation is isocitric acid. This have been formed as a result of hydration. So, here for first oxidation the answer is hydration. Then in the last step, so here as a result of oxidation the, the, pro, the first oxidative product will be formed and uh, in the last oxidation here where uh, before the formation of oxalic acid the malic acid will be there the malic acid will undergo the oxidation this is what we called as a fourth oxidation in the krebs cycle and resulting in the oxaloacetic acid so here uh, the this is the substrate of fourth oxidation and how it is formed it is also it is formed from fumaric acid and this fumaric acid will undergo hydration that means here the substrate of fourth oxidation is malic acid which have been formed as a result of hydration process that means the substrate of first oxidation is formed as a result of hydration in the same way the substrate of fourth oxidation is also been formed as a result of hydration process so we can say hydration and hydration is the correct answer so from the given options option d is the correct answer question number 7 main source of atp in a cell is by oxidative phosphorylation is the given options are a glycolysis b ets that is electron transport system c krebs cycle and d pyruvate oxidation so here atp which is considered to be the energy currency of the cell this have been formed by different steps so they may be formed as a result of substrate substrate level phosphorylation a substrate level phosphorylation means where the electrons are not uh, being transferred from one electron carrier to the other electron carrier and uh, the ATP is formed as a result of uh, uh, directly from substrate molecule. Uh, but the main source of uh, ATP here is the oxidative phosphorylation where the oxidation of uh, the energy sources will be done that is the, the so form NADH that is NADH2 and uh, FADH2. So, these have been formed in uh, glycolysis, link reaction and also in the Krebs cycle these uh, NADH2 and FADH2 that have been formed in different steps of glycolysis uh, link reaction and uh, Krebs cycle they enter into the F1 particle part where, uh, where we can say that uh, membranes of uh, thylakoids where it will be transmitted from one electron carrier to the other electron carriers where the electrons have been lost. So, when the 
uh, electron transport system or we can say when uh, the electrons are carried from one electron to the electron carrier to other electron carrier, the chemiosmotic hypothesis will be taking place. That is a uh, proton concentration gradient have to be balanced between either side of the inter inner membrane. That is the reason why the electrons have been uh, transmitted and resulting into the formation of ATP molecules. So, the main source of ATP in the oxidative phosphorylation will be the electron transport system that is ETS. So, from the given options, option B is the correct answer. Question number 8. Chemiosmotic hypothesis is based on the given options are A membrane potential, B proton gradient, C accumulation of K plus ions and D accumulation of sodium ions. Okay, here chemiosmotic hypothesis which have been given by Peter Mitchell scientist. This concept is being uh, used in both uh, chloroplasts and also in the mitochondria that is on either side of the membranes the accumulation of the protons will be taking place. So, because of that what happens is uh, the proton concentration gradient will be differing on either side of the inner membrane space. So, actually here in the inner membrane of mitochondria, the electron carriers will be there different types of electron carriers like NADH oxidative uh, reductase and FADH oxidative reductase like different types of electron carriers are there. So, uh, when this process taking place what happens when the electrons are moving from one electron carrier to other electron carrier the protons are also moving from one side of the intermembrane to the other side that is from uh, lumen side or matrix side to the uh, intermembrane space side because of that one what happens the proton accumulation will be. taking part. The, the proton concentration will be decreasing decreasing on the matrix side whereas, increasing on the intermembrane space. That means, on either side of the inner membrane there is a uh, difference in the concentration gradient of the protons. So, here uh, then this uh, when the accumulation of protons is taking place they try to move from high concentrated region to the low concentrated region, but here this inter inner membrane will act uh, will act as an impermeable membrane for the movement of the protons. That is the reason why they will move only through one uh, passage that is what we call it as a uh, F naught F 1 particle or we can say this as a ATP synthase where this is the only passage through which the protons can move from the intermembrane space to the matrix. So, that uh, the concentration uh, gradient of the protons can be balanced. So, here this is what the chemiosmotic hypothesis that was given by Peter Mitchell scientist and all this concept is based on the concentration of the proton that is uh, proton gradient. So, from the given options option B is the correct answer. Question number 9. One molecule of glucose requires 2 ATP to get phosphorylated to form fructose 1,6-bisphosphate in glycolysis. How many ATP are used in the same process if the substrate is fructose? The given options are A 1, B 2, C 0 and D 4. So, here we know that uh, during the glycolysis process where the glucose molecule will undergo phosphorylation that is uh, taking the ATP molecules and converted into glucose 6 phosphate molecule and uh, this glucose 6 phosphate molecule will undergo isomerization and converted into fructose 6 phosphate molecule and the so formed fructose 6 phosphate molecule will take up one more ATP here and converted into fructose 1,6 
bisphosphate molecule. So, here that means to convert one glucose into one molecule of fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate molecule, there they require how many ATP molecules? One here and one in the first step, one in the third step. So, a total of two ATP are required to convert one glucose into one molecule of fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. So, here if the same process is uh, used for the fructose molecule, how many molecules of uh, ATP are required? So, one more thing that uh, the glucose and fructose are, are isomer forms that is uh, structure the, they have the same molecular formula, but ar arrangement of the uh, things uh, arrangement will be different. So, if you consider here it as a fructose molecule instead of glucose molecule. So, here fructose molecule will take up one ATP molecule and convert it into fructose 6 phosphate and this fructose one, uh, 6 phosphate will, will take up one more ATP and convert it into fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate molecule. That means, instead of glucose if you are taking the fructose, but the product is same. Here also one ATP is required here and one ATP is required here. So, there is no change in the number of ATPs that have been utilized either it is a glucose or fructose molecule that is here also two ATP molecules are required. So, from the given options option B is the correct answer. Question number 10, in which of the following steps NADH can be produced? The given options are A, glucose to fructose, B, gastric acid to isocitric acid, C, pyruvic acid to acetyl CoA and D, oxaloacetic acid that is OAA to citric acid. So, here from all these steps we can say that uh, uh, they are asking about uh, in which step the NADH can be produced. If we take uh, the reaction that is a third reaction where the pyruvic acid will undergo oxidative decarboxylation process. Here in this step it will take up coenzyme A and uh, utilizes NAD molecule and converted into NADH molecule and uh, decarboxylation is taking place in presence of uh, different types of cofactors the process will be taking place and resulting into acetyl coenzyme A. So, here this is a step where the pyruvic acid is undergoing oxidative decarboxylation resulting into acetyl coenzyme A. This is a step where the NADH will be released that is uh, the hydrogen uh, giver is a pyruvic acid and hydrogen acceptor is a NAD molecule and NAD plus molecule will undergo reduction and converted into NADH molecule whereas, pyruvic acid is undergoing oxidation here and it is undergoing decarboxylation also by losing one carbon here and converted into a two carbon molecule called as a acetyl coenzyme A. So, from the given options option C is the correct answer. Question number 11, in how many steps is carbon dioxide produced in aerobic respiration? The given options are A 1, B 2, C 3 and D 6. So, here aerobic respiration, in aerobic respiration basically it start with uh, glycolysis the first step. In glycolysis neither oxygen is utilized nor carbon, di carbon dioxide is released. So, there is no decarboxylation process during glycolysis process and during glycolysis the glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvic acid and the second one the link reaction. 
that is uh, oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid. In the name itself, it is there that decarboxylation. Whenever the decarboxylation is taking place, uh, carbon molecule is released in the form of carbon dioxide. So, here one decarboxylation step. one decarboxylation step. So, here when one molecule of uh, pyruvic acid is taking part, one decarboxylation is taking place and uh, here the third step that is called as a Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle. Here in this step, uh, at two steps the decarboxylation is taking place. So, as already we had discussed that uh, wherever the decarboxylation is taking, taking part, here carbon dioxide, carbon in the form of carbon dioxide is will be released. So, here one decarboxylation step in link reaction and the two decarboxylation steps in the Krebs cycle. So, that at how many steps the carbon dioxide are produced in uh, aerobic respiration means in total it will be three steps. So, from the given options, option C is the correct answer. Question number 12 when FADH2 or FMNH2 is oxidized through ETS that is electron transport system, the given options are A produces 2 ATP, B consumes half oxygen, C both A and B and D uses one water molecule. So, here this is a question related to oxidation of either FADH2 molecule or FMNH2 molecule, flavin adenine dinucleotide molecule that is a reduced form. So, here we know that uh, the so form FADH2 or NADH2 will, uh, will enter into the electron transport system where the FADH2 or FMNH2 will undergo oxidation process. When they undergo oxidation process, we know that uh, they, are, they, are, they will, uh, uh, when they undergo oxidation process, they will release some electrons. Those electron carriers will move through different types of electron carriers and uh, when the electron carriers are uh, tra transporting the electrons, the protons will be transmitted from matrix to the intermembrane space. So, because of that one, what happens is uh, uh, ATP will be produced. So, for one FADS2 molecule, two ATP molecules are produced. And at the same time, in the last step where the oxygen molecule will be consumed, that is in the last step half oxygen molecule is consumed and it, they will take up two electrons and two protons and converted into one molecule of water. So, here when one FADS2 is oxidized, two ATP molecules are formed and half oxygen molecule will be utilized or consumed. So, from the given options, we can say that uh, the two steps are taking part that is uh, both A and B. So, from the given option, the correct answer is C. Question number 13. In ETS that is electron transport system, electrons move from the given options are A. NADH2 oxygen, B FADH2 oxygen, C H2O2 oxygen and D A and B. So, here electron transport system, here in this process FADH2 and NADH2 both of them will undergo oxidation both of them will undergo oxidation. When they undergo oxidation, they will release some electrons. The so released electrons will pass through different types of uh, electron carriers which are present in the inner membrane of mitochondria and uh, during that process uh, as they are moving from one electron carrier to other electron carrier, 
finally, they have been accepted by the oxygen molecule that is the so release electron from FADH to NADH2 will finally be accepted by oxygen molecule. So, either if it is an FADH2 molecule or NADH2 molecule, the electrons which have been released from them finally, they will be moving to the oxygen molecule such that the oxygen molecule will take up electrons and uh, protons and converted into water molecule. So, that means the final acceptor of electrons from FADH2 and NADH2 in the electron transport system will be oxygen molecule. So, from the given options, option D is the correct answer. Question number 14. In Krebs cycle, the given options are A. Acetyl coenzyme A undergoes 4 oxidations and 2 decarboxylations. B. Pyruvic acid undergoes 4 oxidations and 2 decarboxylations. C. TCA undergoes 4 oxidations and 4 decarboxylations. And D. OAA undergoes 4 oxidations and 2 decarboxylations. So, here if you consider it as a Krebs cycle, actually we can take uh, pyruvic acid as uh, the substrate molecule, but actually here the pyruvic acid molecule undergo oxidative to decarboxylation and convert into acetyl coenzyme A, which will be uh, considered to be the first uh, substrate participating in the Krebs cycle process. But here when we consider the pyruvic acid, where this will undergo oxidative decarboxylation. And uh, this molecule will be converted into pyruvic acid. So, likewise here, uh, it, they, will be they will be participating in various types of uh, processes, where they are converted into they are converted into the further substrate molecules. And here in total Krebs cycle 4 oxidations and 2 decarboxylations will be taking place. 4, four oxidations and 2 decarboxylations are taking place. And here we can say that uh, starting with acetyl coenzyme A, which have been taken accepted by oxalic acid and converted into citric acid. The citric acid uh, will be converted into aconitic acid and aconitic acid will be converted into isocitric acid by hydration and this isocitric acid will undergo oxidation, the first oxidation we can consider and converted into oxalosuccinic acid and oxalosuccinic acid will undergo decarboxylation and converted into alpha keto glutaric acid which is a 5 carbon compound and uh, this will undergo oxidative decarboxylation and converted into succinyl coenzyme A. So, succinyl coenzyme will, will be converted into succinic acid and succinic acid will undergo oxidation and converted into fumaric acid. Fumaric acid by hydration will be converted into malic acid and malic acid once again by oxidation will be converted into oxaloacetic acid. So, here in total of 
four oxidations. First oxidation here, here second oxidation where oxidate to decarboxylation, the third oxidation and the fourth oxidation. So, here four oxidations are taking place and the first decarboxylation here and oxidate to decarboxylation. So, here total two decarboxylations are taking part. That means, if you are starting with the acetyl coenzyme A, a total of four oxidations and uh, two decarboxylations are taking part. So, from the given options, option A is the correct answer.